Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and today I am playing Orbiter 2016. I am about to perform something which I have only read about. I kind of, I've read the guides, the checklists, but I've never actually tried a return to launch site abort scenario. So I am basically kicking up the ascent guidance. It will fly me for the first, you know, minute or so, and then about 50 seconds into the flight, I'm going to simulate the failure of one of the three space shuttle main engines. And that will, of course, put me into a situation where I will be unable to reach orbit, necessitating a maneuver so scary that it was never actually attempted with a real orbiter. The return to launch site landing, or sorry, abort mode, basically turns the shuttle around and attempts to land back at the space center. But it's not quite as simple as that. And despite reading the manual, I have never attempted this. This is going to be my first attempt at it, and I don't actually have the manual handy, so I'm more or less going to fly this by the seat of my pants. So there's the launch computer off. The ascent guidance is going off now. And to simulate the engine failure, what will happen is I will throttle back to one third of the thrust. That's about 4.1. And so at this point, I'm going, alarms would be going off. One of the engines is shut down. Oh no, panic, panic, panic. So what I need to do is make sure that I keep, get as much altitude as possible. So you'll notice I've already started to push my... Uh, ascent vector, or my velocity vector, my pointing vector away from the velocity vector. I'm upside down, so I'm actually pitching forwards, trying to loft the space shuttle to give it, you know, put it higher up than before. Now you can't do this too early because if you do it too early, the aerodynamic forces on the wings of the shuttle will actually pull it off of the uh, shuttle stack and that will end your mission really quick. But now we're at over 100,000 feet where uh, the atmosphere is getting thinner. That's our uh, attitude. Now we should be approaching the time at which the, the SRBs are going to jettison. So. You can't actually jettison those early, you have to hang on to them. And because they push you so far downrange and so fast, at this point, you still have to hang on to that main external tank. So now, of course, what do you do? You turn over? Eh, not quite. What we do is we increase the pitch even higher because we want those engines to support us and push us up further. There are special constraints for when you can jettison that external tank. You have to be pretty much going forwards and it has to be more or less empty. So you have to burn off as much of the fuel as possible. And I don't apparently have a co-pilot with me to do this. So I'm totally guessing my way that through this. So because we have to burn off as much fuel as possible, we have to fly outwards. We have to kind of continue flying down range in this attitude. You'll notice that the space shuttle engines are actually aligned through the center of mass of the external tank. So they're actually mostly firing straight up in this attitude. But once we go far enough down range, we will then flip the whole thing around and start slowing down and eventually flying back. And the idea is that we will run out of fuel when we have exactly the right amount of energy to bring us back to the launch site. So what I'm really doing is watching in the bottom left, that is my, uh, that's my basically my altitude and my velocity. I'm watching my vertical speed. I don't want my vertical speed to drop too much because if it starts dropping below minus 200 meters per second, that is a sign that I am plunging through the atmosphere and will probably break up. It's very easy to mess this up. Uh, so on the very first shuttle flight, there was real consideration given to attempting this maneuver. And John Young, one of the greatest astronauts ever, pretty much said, let's not gamble with it. This is way too scary. I, on the other hand, having flown things like this in Kerbal Space Program and because I'm not going to die if I fail, figure I'll give it a go. Even though I don't have the manual to hand, I pretty much think I can judge the numbers. So my main propulsion, I'm, I think about 375 is 50% of the fuel and that's going to be the point where I commit, commence my powered pitch over maneuver and start heading backwards. So that's a little while away, we're just going to keep an eye on it. 
Now, the return to launch site abort mode wasn't the only abort mode available to the shuttle. If it was going higher and faster when one of the engines went out, there was the possibility of simply continuing to orbit, and that actually happened on STS-51F when five and a half minutes into the flight, one of the main engines shut down, and they just continued into orbit. That was an abort to orbit. They did it. They, and the mission was then carried out at a lower altitude, but otherwise it was, uh, it was fine. The other space shuttle launch aborts were all carried out prior to igniting the SRBs. There was a, an engine anomaly detected in several cases where they shut down with merely seconds before uh, actual launch. There were two other options. There was the transatlantic abort where you would fly across the Atlantic and land on another airfield. And uh, there was a abort once around where you would actually fly one orbit and then land again. Okay, that's 50% of my fuel starting the pitch over maneuver. So this is going to turn our spacecraft around to face the... Wait, no, 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 no. Okay, I've immediately done a very stupid thing. So I was, okay, I was pulling up instead of pitching forwards. That's okay, that's okay. I think we'll see if I can do it. I may have just killed everyone on board. Uh, but given that there was no one in that other seat, I think everybody is me. So now, now we're gonna we're pitching it back in this direction, and the important thing to realize is because the thrust is offset from my pointing vector, that I'm actually yeah you can see where the engines are pointing. There I'm actually pointing backwards and it's beginning to slow down. There's Florida. There's you know some sort of islands there that I don't remember the names of. They're no doubt completely oblivious to the fact that there's hundreds of tons of spacecraft threatening to fall into their otherwise idyllic seas. But that shouldn't happen if I get this right. I mean, at worst, I'll get it right and then crash in Florida instead. I'm pretty sure I'm not going to crash it just yet. I mean, I may come back and not have enough energy to get home or I may have too much energy. But if I can get it near the runway, I will be quite impressed. So my vertical speed is still dropping, and that's fine. So I think my target that I, I read this in one of the manuals is 200 meters per second vertical, and that should get us back. I think I'm actually a little high. I think the maneuver is supposed to peak out at about 120, so I've overdone things a little here. But that's fine. We'll, we'll make this happen. You. you know what? That atmospheric sound from the that communications from the pilots, completely unrelated to what's happening right now. Now I'm going to be clear that there are other people that are much better orbiter players than me that have got the correct mods that actually simulate the failure. They have all the soundtrack, and those are great videos. You should totally watch them because they show you how this works. I, I am just totally doing this by the seat of my pants and. Maybe we crash. Maybe I'm successful. Uh, it will be quite. I'll be quite happy if I just don't crash it terribly. So anyway, the space shuttle manual. They have all these abort modes laid out depending upon how many engines you lose and which part of the flight you're in. There are areas called black zones. Those are those are areas where essentially you're going to lose the spacecraft, loss of crew and vehicle. LOCV. That is not a good situation. And prior to Challenger, there were a lot more black zones in the launch abort program. And this was because after Challenger, they added a number of scenarios where the crew could bail out if the spacecraft was under control and in sort of level flight. I mean, level flight for the space shuttle is descending very, very quickly. So there would be areas where you could get the shuttle into a configuration where it's flying stably without fuel, but it doesn't have the energy to get back to any runway and therefore would ditch in the ocean, which would be pretty much a suicidal thing to attempt. It's often said that the space shuttle's aerodynamic characteristics were so poor, you'd be better flying the box that it came in. There we are. Actually, we are literally going in reverse at this point. But uh, not for long. This is the point where we begin to turn around. So our horizontal speed is, well, our total speed is about 300 and something. Our vertical speed is minus 200. And I'm now 
carefully controlling the pitch to make sure that my vertical speed okay, uh, doesn't decrease any more. So when the the velocity gets below the 200, that is the point, or gets to 200 and starts increasing again, that'll be us having completed the turnaround. Note the angle of attack is like 160 degrees, which is basically us going in reverse. Okay, and velocity is going to start increasing again, so we are beginning to go back. We're down to 122k fuel. And I am hoping that will be sufficient to get me back. I mean, the good news is with rockets, because so much of their mass is fuel, as you burn the fuel, your acceleration gets higher, and proportionately you get more of your delta V towards the end of the fuel tank when your acceleration is higher. And I mean, the other good news is that as the acceleration gets higher, we're having to spend... We're having to angle up less and less to counteract gravity, so we're getting more and more lateral velocities. That says that, look at the speed now picking up. 550 there, so we're definitely heading back. The question is, will we have enough energy to get there? I mean, if you think about it, the abort modes really are all about energy. How much energy you have there. Like you can see, I'm actually heading back. I noticed that the uh, rocket plumes are not correct. Those rocket plumes look like they're still firing in the atmosphere rather than in the vacuum. They show the the shock diamonds, which are because of overexpansion of the nozzle, and they require atmospheric pressure to be greater than the pressure of the rocket exhaust. And that would not be true at 81 kilometers up. So yeah, um, it, it is all about energy. So the transatlantic abort is kind of that moment where you have enough energy to get across the Atlantic and uh, get there. And if you have slightly more energy, then you can actually perform a whole orbit. And that's the, the once around orbit. That was apparently the abort mode with the shortest window. It was only a few seconds between uh, the transatlantic and the abort to orbit where the once around was viable. Okay, but now our main prop is down to about 20, so we're going to start pitching the nose way down. So we have to have the nose very close to our velocity vector when we ditch the tank. So you'll notice that my vertical speed is starting to increase very fast, or starting, we're starting to drop down. So I want to get this close to it. We've got to be within a couple of degrees, otherwise the tank will blow into us. There, cut the engine. Jettison the tank and use the RCS thrusters to move me away from the spacecraft and I still have a bit of extra roll there. So start flying this thing like an aircraft. I think we might be a little high here. Okay, yeah, that is that comms being called in completely unrelated to the chaos that is under is going on in the sky right now. Okay. So the next thing we do is you actually fly this thing like an aircraft and you're going to pitch down into the atmosphere and then pull back up in a big fugoid, right? So you basically exchange kinetic energy for potential energy and that helps bleed off speed. It puts you in a controllable, a more controllable regime, let's say. So look at me, I'm pulling back and you can f hear the air there. So I've got to be careful here that my g-forces don't get too high because the vehicle will break up if you go too far and this is very hard in this i think i'm not sure what the limit is but i think like th four g's maybe oh 3.5 uh just just not too much come on there we go and you see now we're, we're we've reached minimum altitude at 28 kilometers and we are coming back up so we're gonna gain altitude and f pop up over the the launch site, which is somewhere out there. I can't see it just yet. I'm gonna then have to find the runway. And if I knew how Orbiter Orbiter's MFDs works, I could probably target it and everything. Uh, that would require reading a manual, which I don't have time to read the manual right now. Obviously, real astronauts who would be attempting this for real would have read the manual and simulated it many, many times. I believe that to qualify as a shuttle pilot, you had to fly something like 500 simulated shuttle landings. And of course, the pilot was one step down from the actual pilot, who was the commander. But the commander had to have flown in space previously. 
You can always tell who who the less nerdy uh, space geeks are when they get their photo taken in the shuttle simulator or whatever and they choose to sit in the pilot seat rather than the commander's seat. Okay, so we've managed to pop up to about 45 kilometers, maybe. Yeah, no, actually, 47. That is pretty high. In fact, I think I have way too much energy here because I'm moving at Mach 5 and at 50 kilometers. So I'm going to have to do a big turn to, like, I'm going to fly past this and turn around. And, you know, really, that's what it is. It's a bunch of, it's energy management. I have huge excesses of energy, but that huge amount of energy means that it's actually very hard for me to turn around and hit that runway. You see the runway down there? It's just uh, off the end of the 30 degree marker, so uh, I'm wondering if should I turn this way? No, you know what? I'm going to turn the other way. This is where I should have a co-pilot, or sorry, a pilot sitting next to me and actually calling out what the correct uh, tables are. So the space shuttle would actually have a book with all the different tables, giving them the numbers that they would need for various abort times and various abort modes so that they would know exactly what attitude they should have for each uh, abort that they would be doing. Okay, let's try turning this. I'm kind of pulling this hard here. I'm turning away from it so that we're so that we're going to come around hopefully lined up with the runway and then we're going to flip it around the other way and come around in one big loop. So this is me slowing down a bit we're now dropping above to below Mach 5, now Mach 4.5, I don't know, I'm just guessing what these values are. Actually, TAS, I don't know if that is indicated airspeed or if that is actual airspeed. I would imagine that the that's a digital airspeed because it would, probably wouldn't be showing anything while I was screaming through the atmosphere backwards. Okay, this is me pulling hard. So we're trying to make this turn. There's the coastline there. At worst, we end up going... At this point, the worst that happens is we put it into a, a very careful controlled glide and everybody bails out. And, uh, you know, I apologize for ruining their nice expensive machine and the payload, of course, whatever was in the payload. Now, there was one other interesting sort of abort, which was the launch of the Chandra X-ray Observatory. In that one, one of the engines had a problem that led to, ultimately led to too much oxygen being used. I think it's, there's a great article on it that explains that it was actually a failure in one of the igniters and a combination of backup computers and sensors failing. And they ended up getting to orbit with 15 feet per second less than they needed because the uh, oxygen ra the oxygen ran out. What was interesting about that one was the Chandra X-ray Observatory was not specced to be reflown if they had to perform an abort landing, either an RTLS or a transatlantic abort. So had that thing got worse, and it was probably one of the, it's one of the great uh, launch loops. There's somebody's posted this uh, with all the voice comms. Had they failed that, yeah, they would have scrapped that whole mission. Okay. Turning around here, moving downwards at about 100 meters per second, I'm down to about Mach 2, and I am a long way out. I do not know if I'm going to be able to get there. Okay, there we go. I can see the runway, and it's way, 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 way out there. Okay. I'm going to use the orbital maneuvering system. Aha! You see, I had that trick up my sleeve. I know it would work perfectly well at 20 kilometers. Actually, I don't know if it would, but uh, <laughs> I'm going to use it. I admit, this is not part of a standard RTLS return, but I'm flying this by the seat of my pants. So, as in, I'm guessing. I'm not really flying by the seat of my pants because I haven't got one of those fancy flight simulators. Okay, so... I mean, we have plenty of energy here, but I think... I think I just don't have enough to get there. I would come up short. So I'm using the orbital maneuvering system to give myself a little bit of a push and maybe that might take me the distance that I'm gonna gonna need. Ah, 
Again, this is why they had very detailed checklists in the spacecraft to actually talk them through the correct attitude they would need for all of these things. You know when you're flying spacecraft for real, you, uh, you follow the checklist because they have been put together by people that have thought through all these problems already. Okay, so now... Now we're doing good, and in fact, we are actually gaining a little bit of speed, so I think the addition of the orbital maneuvering system may be sufficient to get me to the target. So the Space Shuttle Orbital Maneuvering System, that's those uh, pods up there, you can see them firing. They are two AJ-10-109 engines, they burn uh, monomethyl hydrazine and dinitrogen tetroxide, which is the same fuel that's also used in the rest of the reaction control system on the shuttle orbiter. And one of those engines is actually going to be the service propulsion system for the very first SLS flight. It, and I'm not just saying like one of those model of engines, one of the engines that literally flew in a space shuttle is going to be reused for the SLS. Okay, this this is actually looking good. I'm feeling, and I'm feeling I'm just looking at the numbers. I think with this little cheaty help that's made me a cheating scumbag, I am able to get to the runway. And the real question will be, can I land it there? So we're going about 390 meters per second. I am not sure what the limits are on dynamic pressure. I should probably check that, but the dynamic pressure is dropping. I do have failures enabled, incidentally, in Orbiter, so I would hope that if I exceeded the limits of the spacecraft, it would actually tell me and then mock my inability to fly and follow checklists. Okay, I think we're doing pretty well, using the shuttle's rudder to steer and aim this thing. I'm hoping that's the runway. I mean, it's the only thing that looks like a runway here. Okay... So, it does look like it's a little short, but that's fine because we have a big flare right at the end. We're gonna need to remember to drop the landing gear and, of course, use the brakes. <laughs> I don't actually know what the brakes are. No, I think I know that Control B does the air brakes. You are clear to land. I, I th and I presume that regular B will use the regular brakes. I don't know how to fire the drogue chute. Oh dear. Okay. You know what? If I get it on the ground, I can always look up the manual then. <laughs> okay. Coming down, 240. This thing becomes unstable below 185, I believe. Like, that's the stall speed. Oh, the stall speed is very close to that. So I want to keep the speed up until then. Engines is off. Now ready. Dropping the landing gear. Okay. Oh, come on, get it flat, get it flat. Yes, watch that vertical speed. Oh, come on, 90 meters. Crap, 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 crap. Get it down, I'm running out of runway already. Let me get... Yes! Oh, ow, that hurt. Now it's brakes! Brakes! Air brakes are working. Holding B for regular brakes. And that does not seem to be working very well. Uh... <laughs> This is not good. Uh, maybe I'm going to look up the manual for this. I do not want to ruin this by crashing the shuttle. Pausing the game, looking up the manual now. Okay, and the manual says, comma and full stop. Apply both the wheel brakes, and that seems to be much better. Okay, we're into the runoff area. Still going at 50 meters per second. Into the grass. 40. <laughs> oh, don't go in the canal. 30. 20. Two, 19. Oh, yes. Yes. Oh, yes. Brilliant. Brilliant. Stopped just in the nick of time after a successful return to launch site abort where I didn't use any of the checklists and just, you know, guessed my way through it. Ha! I'm gonna call that a success. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.